Hello! Thanks for joining me, everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time when we can relax and craft together for about an hour, and we work on projects from beginning to end. Uh, today is special because it is Finish It Friday, and Finish It Friday is when uh, we uh, break out a project that we haven't worked on in a while, something deep in the unfinished projects pile, and we work on it uh, for the first Friday of every month. So it is the first Friday of October, if you can believe it, which is crazy town. And I have brought out my jean quilt. So this is a quilt that I have been making for at least a decade now, on and off, and I just never sit and finish it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually on the quilting stage now. I'm hand tying it all with with wool yarn and then I'll wash it and then the wool yarn will uh, felt and just get all tight and hold the quilt together. And I'm just in the process of that hand tying. I am a ways in to the hand tying, but I got a ways to go yet. So we'll put an hour on it tonight and maybe I'll let it sit out and maybe it will get a little bit further. I don't know. I'll, I'll show you guys. Um, I'm gonna flip it, flip it around. Uh, it is the jean quilt. It, it's uh, the same jeans. These uh, these jeans right here in uh, the hedgehog guy, this is actually leftover fabric from this jean quilt. So it's a log cabin style uh, squares, blocks, and uh, they were all done with one inch, I think one and a half inch strips. So they're one inch once they're sewn in there. So you can see kind of a little bit of gradient there that's just from all the different strips that's how this is as well so i'll flip you around and i'll show it to you and uh we'll see if we can get any further on it so i hope you have an unfinished project of your own that you're working on even if it's just the laundry which is back there <laughs> i'm working on that too today uh all right guys i'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going tonight okay so here is the jean quilt I can't get too far up. Let's see, I can get, there we go. So uh, you can kind of see, I'll just kind of show you what's going on here. So it started, I, I started with these log cabin style blocks and uh, log cabin is just when you have a square in the middle and then you keep sewing strips around and around and around it. But uh, you, uh, to, like traditionally you do uh, half of the strips a dark color and half of the strips a light color and it's really subtle with this quilt but you can kind of see that this whole area here is dark and then around these outside bits it's it's lighter and how I did that is this is the dark side of the fabric and this is, or this is the, um, this is the, the right side of the jeans. So like the outside of the jeans and then the inside of the jeans, like the wrong side of the jeans makes these, uh, makes the lighter side. And let's see, I don't know if I can get further out, but, um, by putting a log cabin quilt together, you can get kind of interesting shapes and colors. So you can see, I got a bigger square. Th this is the actual log cabin block is right here. So you have uh, a block like this where half is dark and half is light. But if you match up that dark side with other blocks, you know, and here's the dark side and the light side. Here's another block, dark side, light side, dark side, light side. Then all of a sudden you can make other shapes. So you have this subtle kind of diamond there. And uh, um, that's kind of, this is the main part. And then I have these, lighter bits going around and then it's almost as if I have stripes the rest of the way. I can't even show you how big it is, Robin. It is it is a very large queen. So this is pushing king size almost because I wanted it to hang quite a bit over over the edge of the bed here. If I get to the side here, you can see, oh, maybe you guys can't, but it goes all the way, all the way down here too. So it is large, large, large. It goes over my entire table here. 
So, all right, I'm gonna scoot you guys down again. We'll get a little bit closer. So how I how I sewed my strips together, I cut I cut one and a half inch strips, and then I just sew them together uh, with this raw just a raw edge. So this is this is actually the seam allowance of putting two together. Sometimes the seam allowance is exposed like this, and then sometimes it gets flipped around and you see the back side of it. So that's that's the deal. Um, I have been tie quilting it. So if I show you the back, oh my gosh, you guys, it's so heavy too. So here's the back, the back fabric, and I've been tying the quilt uh, with wool just because it's so heavy and I wasn't really confident in my um, machine sewing skills for something this big and heavy. Um, and I and I just actually really like the tied look. I think it's just really kind of cute. It adds texture. Um, I did this black because I think it'll kind of blend in a little bit and it goes with the black on the back. So what I'm doing is I'm just tying these little knots, like a little square knot. You know, here's the back of it. And I'm kind of doing that in a padding. Yeah, I, I do have batting for it. So it's just this thin, I think it's, this is the, when I was using the bamboo batting. So this is a thin, very drapey, flowy, uh, bamboo batting. So it's very light, um, but it will still have a little bit of quilt feel to it. Like it, it's not just just the jeans and a the backing. There is there is a batting in there as well. Oh, here see here's the back. All the all the jeans sewn together. A crazy crazy amount of jeans. Yeah, it's definitely rustic for sure. Oh yeah, you recognize the back. This is this is some of my back or some of my uh, my fabric. I used a lot of this in the Splendid Sampler as well. So, okay, what I've been doing for the quilting is I started out, I don't know if you guys can tell really, I'm, I'm hoping that once I wash this, you'll be able to tell, but I started out by putting these kind of diagonals through it, but it left a big square open, and I can show you one of those in a little bit here. So I started sewing a little five in the center of every every kind of diamond that was happening. So I can, if I scooch up, it's so heavy. It's gonna be awesome in winter, assuming I get it done. It's gonna be just heavy and nice. But so here's an example of um, where I'm not done with the quilting yet. So I have these big kind of diamonds, which I thought looked really cool but I didn't think this was enough quilting with just these diamonds. So I, I started putting some in the middle and that's what I'm gonna to continue tonight. So what I have to do yet is every, every one of these squares that are made with the, with, the, with the quilting ties, I gotta put additional ones right in the middle. So here's, here's an example like here. I put, put the uh, four in the middle there. So here and then here's another bunch so that's what we're doing. I have a, it half done. So I have all of these big diagonals done. Those are done for the whole quilt. Now I'm just adding these little five ties and uh, um, I'm about halfway done with that. And then you guys, I still have the whole entire border to do. I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing for that. I might just extend the lines a little bit. Oh, I don't know, but there's a whole border to do. So there, there's a lot of work. Um, but why don't we just get started? Uh, we'll start with this, this one right here. So I have to look at the other ones to see where, where I put them, but I am going to, I think there's, there's one right in the middle. Oh, I think I just used these, these as my guide. So I know I go right in the center of, um, like if this is the center line in between these squares, I put I put two there, and then I put um, them in the center here as well, and I kind of go with the diagonal a bit, and then one exactly in the center. Oh, you have jeans that you've saved for fifteen to twenty years. <laughs> Maybe it's time to make this quilt. Yeah. Uh, so this these are all jean like my husband's jeans. <laughs> He, he, uh, um, I just say when all his jeans wear, wear out, I just kind of, I've been saving them. Some of them even have paint, like here's a little, here's a little paint spot right there. Um, 
I think there might be one of my dad's jeans in, and I'm pretty sure there's one or two of my jeans, but I found out real quick that, you know, women's jeans have that stretch in them. Now men's jeans do too, but um, women's jeans, my, my jeans all had that stretch, and that didn't fare as well as the men's jeans, which don't have all that extra stretch in it. Uh, so I just went with with his jeans after after a little while. So you know I like keeping my projects together here. Uh, so I I have this little container and I have a few things that I might need for this. So I have my little scissors. Uh, this is just so I have a scissors um, available with the project. But you know here in my little Facebook world here I have a, a lot of scissors. But we'll we'll use this guy. Um, there we go, and maybe I should leave this on. He's a pretty sharp one. Um, and then I have a leather thimble in case I need it. And I'm using a big honkin' needle here. Oh gosh, I don't even know. This is some sort of upholstery uh, needle for sure. It is super thick, um, uh, and it's long and it is just big. Uh, the eye is big enough that I can hold yarn, but it's just barely big enough. I mean, I would like that to be a little bit bigger. Sharp point. And I also, in case I need it, ooh, it's a little bent, but I, I also have an awl <laughs> in case I need to really get in through the, um, the fabric. So it's jeans, it's thick, it's pretty intense. And I think that's one of the reasons it's taken me so long to finish this quilting is it's just a lot to deal with. <laughs> it's just pretty hefty. And the wool I'm using is a wool, it's, a, it's, it's wool. The yarn I'm using is 100% wool, which means it will um, felt, meaning if I, like a sweater, if you have a wool sweater in the wash, like in the hot wash, it'll shrink. I am hoping to uh, I'm hoping that this wool, wool will shrink up and then all of these little ties will turn into like these tiny little balls after. Uh, so they'll they'll actually shrink a little bit and I'm thinking you might be able to see the pattern that I'm making a little bit better. But it shrinking up will really hold this together is, is the hope. <laughs> so that's the plan. Uh, so why don't we get started tonight? We'll see how this goes. It's a lot of heft to deal with, but I think we'll be okay. So I like starting out, I just get a length of thread here. Oh, Joe, it took me well, a decade to make this top. I have just been, uh, I've been sewing the top on and off forever and ever and ever. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're getting there. So there was a stint that I sewed it a little bit more. But yeah, it's just taking a while. So I, I actually haven't worked on this for probably a year. So I'm just thinking my way through this again as well. So, all right, I'm gonna start in the middle here. I, I'm gonna put my awl and the thimble to the side. Hopefully we don't totally need that. And I'm gonna lift, I'm gonna just lift the quilt up because then I can get underneath as well. So let's start, I'm, I'm dividing this space in half. And I'm using what I have um, already as a guide. So this is right in the middle. Um, so we can do that one. Let's just, let's just go exactly in the middle here. Well, actually, let's let's um, let's start with the middle one that goes along this edge. So we'll start there. So I'm just kind of aiming for the middle. So I'm just I've doubled up my yarn here, and I'm going underneath. All right, so far so good. And then I'm coming up. Uh, in the same spot, but just like, a, you know, a quarter, uh, about an eighth inch away from the hole. And then I'm just going to uh, pull that through. Got to urge it a little bit. Okay. And I, I let, I've been doing my ties lately as I do them. So I'm going to just tie this first one in 
like a square knot, I suppose. I, I knot it twice. Okay, and I'm gonna jump and do the one in the middle on the other side now. And I'll, I'll leave like a lot of like bloop here so I have enough to make my little ties. So let's jump across there. Oh, you worked at Levi in San Francisco. And they gave away the end bolts free to employees. Oh, dang, Lydia, that's, that would be pretty dang awesome. <laughs> uh, Joe, I did, well, I, I cut all these squares. So this is some wool that I had. I think this is probably about a two and a half inch square here. Maybe three inch square. Eh, I think the two to two and a half inch square here. I, I made all of those. And then I, um, I did not cut all the, the jeans at once because I didn't have all the jeans at once. Uh, I've acquired them as my husband uh, uses them up. So, um, oh, I didn't get quite centered here. Oh, it's, it's okay. So I didn't do that all at once. So, but I, what I did is I, whenever I had some uh, jeans, I just kept cutting it to these one and a half inch strips and I just kept sewing them to each other. So I had this great big roll of one and a half inch, um, like this one and a half inch spool of jeans. <laughs> now old war jeans are in fashion. Yeah, well, when they, when they uh, rip at the butt or something like that, where the leg totally uh, rips off, then, then it gets into my, gets in my pile here. So while this is still connecting, I'm just, I'm gonna just tie tie in knot, the knot over then under and then under then over. There we go. So uh, I can snip this and uh, we'll have our two, two ties, but I'm going to keep going before I do that. So the next tie is on the center strip and uh, I can kind of do it in line with, um, trying to get it in frame here. Yeah. So I can do it in line with these other points. So I know it has to be in the center, which is this one. And in line with what I got going on here. So right here. You can see it's just totally a hefty deal here that I got to manage all this bulk and everything. Usually I'm doing this on the floor and I have a little little stool that I sit on so the weight of the all the weight is taken up on the floor which which is nice. Right now I'm sliding off the table a little bit. There we go. Sometimes I need the the um the thimble just to help me pull up the the thread, the yarn. I'm putting some of the bulk on the table here, then it won't slide around as much. All right, I'm gonna leave a little edge here. Oh yeah, log a log cabin design would be great for a quilt as you go, totally. All right, that's not moving. Over then under. Then back the other way. All right, now I'm gonna jump to the lower one. Ooh, I'm, I might not have enough thread or yarn, but we'll see. This one would go right here. I just, I love the idea of that this is all like recycled, you know? That's, that's kind of what got me going on, on this. I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah, I, I tried the players, but that was actually a little more difficult and it, um, it wasn't great on the needle. So it's actually going fine. I mean, it, 
it is, it's not your normal sewing for sure. Like I am, I'm pulling quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna, I didn't, I don't have enough yarn to do the middle one. So I'm gonna just tie this one off. Okay, so now all I have to do is snip in the middle of these. Middle, middle, middle. And uh, then I can snip them shorter. So I'm, I'm snipping them to like a two finger length. So right like that. Ooh, it does feel good to be working on this again though. It's, it's been quite a while and I would really love to see this done. Yeah, yeah, the pliers, the teeth of the pliers puts a, a bunch of marks in, in the needle and it makes, makes the needle hard to use and yeah, kind of wrecks the needle. So I don't do that either. I mean, if it gets really bad, I'll just get this on and really try and yank it up with the leather. And if it gets really, really bad, then I will just try to jab it with the awl. But the reason it, it gets stuck is I'm most likely on right on the seam or somewhere where there's so much bulk. So sometimes I'll just move over a little bit and that'll, that'll do the job. It's lots of layers of jeans and uh, heavy, uh, it's just super heavy. So it just is one of those projects that you need to be a little tough with. All right, so there's the four. I still need to do the one in the middle. I didn't have enough enough yarn to start out with. I think I had a little bit of yarn left in, in here. Let's use that up, yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna do right in the middle there. So next time I'll use a little bit more yarn, then I can get all five at once. Oh yeah, you're totally right, let's do it. Taking out the pins. Don't need any of these three anymore. Oh God, that's the best feeling, isn't it? Taking out all the, taking out all the quilting pins. Okay, let's go right in the center here. I keep, um, doing it right-handed, so I'm, I'm pushing it in with my right hand, then I'm pulling it through with my right hand and pulling it back up with my right hand, so me switching hands all the time isn't doing me any favors for speed, but it's just, it's more comfortable. There we go. I have a little bit of yarn on this one yet, so I can I'll use it for the center bit for the next one. All right, let's do our two fingers here. Okay, so that is our first little set of five here. So I'm farther. <laughs> that makes me happy. So let's, let's uh, shimmy down the line here. We're just gonna go horizontal, so let's see what is next. Let's unroll it. So I, I, I have like to do them diagonally, but I'm doing them row by row. So oop, now we're in a, a dark area here. Ooh, lots of pins that we'll get rid of. There we go. Okay, look, these jeans have like weird rust stains on and stuff. All right, so here's the here's the next square we're dealing with. Like here's some of these um, little seam allowances. I just think that added like a just a neat little texture. Oh man, it is big, Linda. It is um, it is a very large queen size quilt. I bet you it could probably be considered a king size. Just about. All right, the center. I only have enough really for the center here, so I'm gonna use what remains on of yarn on this needle for that. There we go. I would love, love, love this quilt to be done. So I'm expecting that I'll be able to uh, wash this in my washing machine, but 
Ugh, just barely, maybe. I don't know. I might just try and stuff it in my washing machine and have it be okay. I have an, an agitator washing machine. Um, on purpose, we got an a washing machine with an agitator in so I could felt stuff <laughs> easier than an, than an upright one. So I'm hoping maybe this fits in there. We'll see. All right. That's not enough yarn for anything. Oh, uh, uh, non-slip shelf liner and tape on the end of the pliers. It won't hurt the needle. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I haven't had too much trouble where I, I really need it, I don't think. All right, I think I can take all these pins out. They're going to be in my way a little bit, and I got that middle one in. So we're probably sufficient with that. We will see. <clears throat> I'm really hoping that I can get this in the washing machine. <clears throat> All right, let's get some more yarn here. And we'll do the, the four surrounding ones. Man, it would feel real good to get another row of this done. Oh, man. Everything in the world is all about consistency. I'm feeling like more and more everything is just the teeny teeny amounts of time where you're where you're seemingly making zero progress whatsoever and then all of a sudden you're a little bit further. That's I don't know. Everything seems like that lately. So we'll do a little bit more on this too. <laughs> and eventually it'll get done. I might just leave this out. Maybe I will work on this th this weekend. Oh, you guys, I was going to show you my progress on the doily too, but I don't, I'm not near it. I'll have to break out the doily on, on Monday. It's kind of another uh, finish it Friday sort of project. But I have been working on it a lot just, just um, to relax and stuff. So, And now I really want to see it done. <laughs> oh, I should have. Hold on that a little bit more. See if I can. All right, good. But that is coming along as well. You think you would take it to the laundromat and put it in the large washer? Yeah, that's that's what that's my backup plan for sure. But I would love to wash it. See if I can wash it here because. Um, cause if I can do that, then, uh, um, we'll use it more. Yeah. It'll weigh a ton, ton when it's wet, but yeah, I'd like to, yeah, for sure. I could bring it to a commercial washer and we have one down the street, but I want to, I want to first see if it's even viable for me to, to do at home here because um, yeah, because I want to be able to use it as an everyday quilt. And if, um, if I can't wash it normally, then that will be a problem. So we'll see. We'll just see. It's not a concern yet because I'm not done. But we'll get there. Oh, Clover makes little things to go around your needle, too. That's interesting. They got some innovative little quilting doickies there, don't they? Smart people at Clover. All right. I can let the fabric bunch up kind of like how I am here because I'm uh, I I'm going to be cutting this later. I only need it to be long enough to um to be the two fingers for each of these ties. 
All right, I have one more, and that's the one straight up here. Doot, 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 doot. Stop right there. Oh, Robin, I have washed the chevron quilt. It is being used on the couch as the, the napping quilt right now. <laughs> So it did wash up really, really um, well. I could have a show and tell of that on Monday too. But yeah, I, I think it turned out great. It, it poofed up a little bit from the quilting, which is great. Um, you can see the quilting a little bit better then. And uh, um, you know, some of the back of it was where we made made our own fabric from all the little scraps and those got uh, little poofs on it too and I just think it turned out really fun. I'm super duper happy with it. We are totally using it for real. Oh, I'll be working this weekend, Noeline, probably. Um, I do want to clean my sewing machine though, so, uh, and crochet on my doily a little bit. So if I kind of fit that in in between some of my work stuff, then that will be, that will be a nice weekend. We've been gone for like all of uh, September and, and August, so I'm playing like catch up on everything. It feels good to just, that I'll have a moment to do that. I'm gonna clean the house a little bit. We gotta cook everything. We have a bunch of um, squashes and that sort of stuff to cook. So we'll be uh, roasting up a storm. I'm, maybe I'll make some soup. We will see, but I'm hoping, hoping that sort of stuff. Hopefully it's nice out. It'd be nice to go for a, a walk. It's been so gloomy lately. Okay, that guy's done. We got two, two of our little five pieces here done. So let's, let's scooch over some more. I think we only have one more here. Yep, one more and then we're done with this row. Okay, back to a light area again. And I have some yarn on here yet, so I think I can get a few, a few out of here. Let's start with the middle one, or the, the two side middle ones. Ooh, zucchini bread or lemon zucchini bread. We are actually out of the zucchini now. Uh, we do have a garden, but before we left for the wedding, we had to take everything out of the garden because we were gonna have a freeze warning when we're gone. So everything's been um, cut from the garden. We haven't prepped any of it though. So we have a couple, um, we have several cucumbers. So I don't know what to do with all this cucumber, but we have a lot of cucumber left yet in the fridge that we picked, um, a bunch of kale. I have to clean the kale and, and prep it still. Um, and then a few butternut squash. I think that's about it. So that is, that's what's left of the garden. Um, I haven't actually gone out there since we've been back cause it's just been raining and just gloomy, gloomy. Um, or I've been just um, working, so I haven't checked out the garden. I'm guessing we'll have have some kale growing yet slowly, but I think zucchinis are done. Maybe we'll get a cucumber out of there yet, but I, I think it did did freeze a little, so it might just all be turning to goo out there. We'll have to see. Oh, thanks, Pat. Yeah, I that was that's one of my favorite things about this quilt. Um, some of the seams are exposed, and then if I sewed them this way, then they weren't exposed. When I when I sewed the um, one and a half inch strips together, I kind of randomly sewed them one way or the other, so it would be kind of a surprise. So there's some areas of the quilt where there's a lot of these exposed seams, and some where there's there's not, and it just kind of turned out that way, which I think is kind of fun. Oh yeah, pickles. So that we do already have a lot of refrigerator pickles, but I suppose we could do some more. Um, maybe not refrigerator pickles, like for real pickles we could do. 
You know what, I'm gonna snip this right away. Relieve some of that pressure. All right, let's do this angled one. Yeah, exactly. We have a bunch of squash that we kind of haven't done anything with for a while just because, yeah, they last a little while. But we're running out of food again. We need to actually make it. Oh, that's true, Nolene. Yeah, I could freeze some. If we go through kale pretty quickly, I'm thinking we'll probably eat that up right away. Oh, your mom always grew butternut squash. This is the first time we did butternut squash. We've done acorn squash before, but th that didn't do as well last year. We thought we tried a, a different one this year, and it was going okay. Lots of leaves. Um, could have been a little bit better. All right, I think that is it for that piece of yarn. I'm going to have to get more, more yarn, but since I'm here with the scissors, let's snip these ones. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot and a lot. I mean, we'd have, we'd have so many pickles, it would be, be crazy. So I don't know, but yeah, I don't know what else to do with all those cucumbers. So it'll probably end up being pickles. You're probably, it's probably a good idea. Okay, let's get more yarn here. I made sure that the yarn that I got was not washable because they have that like kind of washable, non-shrinking wool now, sometimes at yarn stores. I had to go online because I couldn't find the non-washable kind. So I had to go online and, and find 100% wool, which I thought was surprising. I didn't think that would be as difficult. And black. I wanted the black 100% wool. I managed to snag this. Oh, see, I'm not, a, I'm, I actually don't like cucumbers very much. Uh, my husband likes cucumbers, but yeah, I, ugh, just like, I don't know, cucumber sandwich. And I don't really like mayo either. So cucumber sandwich and mayo just sounds just, I don't know, icky. Icky to me. Da, da, da. About right. There. I think I'm a little off here, but I think this will do. Yeah, let's go right there. Yeah, just cucumbers by themselves I don't really like, so it would have to be in pickle form. Otherwise, I do like them cut up in water. Will the wool yarn ball up? like pom-poms were washed. That's what I'm hoping, Linda. I'm hoping that um, it won't look so much like these little ties anymore. It would, it'll almost be like these tight little balls. They might just be like tighter ties, but over time they should keep felting and then eventually kind of be, yeah, like um, uh, little, little puff balls. So that's, that's what I'm hoping for, at least. All right, there we go. Sometimes when you have too much yarn is a bad idea because it rubs on everything a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Ooh, even getting one row of these done feels good. Still that dang border to figure out yet. Yeah, exactly, Pat. It, I think it'll become kind of like a French knot. I mean, you know, these poofs will be on the outside, but they'll be they'll be so shrunk down and so like compacted on themselves that it'll be kind of like kind of like a tight little ball like that is what I'm hoping for. So visually, they should look smaller than what they do right now and and kind of be more round. At least that's what that's what, what I'm expecting. Okay, so here's a little challenge. Um, this one, I have to go right through the seam. We'll see how this goes. I think maybe I'll go down on this side and then try and come up on the other side and maybe I'll need to get the, the leather guy out to help, help me pull on this.
I could just, you know what I'm going to do instead, instead of going through that seam, I'm just going to come up, come up next to the seam here, then I don't have to deal with it and it'll still kind of appear, appear in the middle. So here, I, I didn't want to go through this because this is too many layers, so I just came up just right next to it, but on the edge. Oh, your very first quilt you tied with acrylic yarn and the strands are still separate more than 30 years later. Yep, and that's because of, because it's acrylic yarn. Um, it has to be an animal, um, an animal product, an an, like from animals to felt and to, to do that felting um, where it all kind of balls up. And actually I, I've tried that with like a softer, animal thread like alpaca and it, it doesn't do it the same way um, as as this 100% wool does and it really does need to be 100% wool too I think so yeah acrylic yarn yep that will never ever ever felt it might the strands might come apart and get get like a little softer but it will never do the felting like it'll never turn into that tight little ball feel like I've, I've been watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy lately and I feel like I'm kind of, I'm suturing and I have my little scissors here doing like surgery on this quilt. Okay, I think that's it for, for that row. So uh, the one rows have three in it and then the next rows, which, you know, are at the next angle down, I think those have four. So let's, let's see if we can get a couple done here. Might not finish this whole row, but we'll give it a try. Let's see, how many more rows do I have? Oh, I just have this row of four and then another row of three, and then I'm done with all the center areas. Then all I have left is um, the, the borders, and I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do for that. So after I get all these, these like little five areas that I'm doing right now, then I'll have to lay it all out again. And I tied a bunch of little itty bitty ties. So I tied just like I, I would take a piece of yarn like this and just tie it into a knot. And then I can pick them up, my little knot of yarn, and I can lay them on the quilt and I can kind of get a test look of what it was gonna look like tied. So I have a few of those yet. I might just lay those on the border and figure out a border pattern. But first I gotta finish up these two, two rows. So I got seven, of these groupings yet to go. So that'll that'll still take some time, but maybe if I keep this laid out. Ooh, first of all, forgot the best part. Let's get rid of these, get rid of these pins. Totally the best part. And I'm hoping this is enough quilting. I mean, this is still maybe a lot of space, but you know, whatever. If it gets to be a worn quilt where the batting tears a little, I think that'll just add to the old rustic feel of it. I think we'll be okay. It's old and rustic with a twist though, I feel like with the, um, with just all the like fun little extra details here. Okay, next up is this guy. So now my, my centers are from here to here. So here's the center piece. Get rid of him right away. Okay. Center. So close to done. But now there are only seven spaces left before. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited, Deborah. So ooh, it's it's you know. Putting in this hour, this finish it Friday, it really moves things along. It really does. It doesn't, I mean, it, you just think, uh, what's an hour going to do? But I don't know. Now I'm motivated to work on this more again. So we'll see. I might just leave this out. It's been sitting in my office and it's pretty dang bulky sitting in my, my um, little home office here. So even just removing it from my office and having it, just out so I work on it might just make me feel better because then my office will be cleaner. Who knows? Maybe that'll be enough for me to get it get it worked on more. Oh, 
It'd be cool to be farther on this this weekend. We'll see. We'll see. See what happens. But dang, it would be nice to have this uh, for winter. Yeah, exactly, Deborah. Winter's a coming, sister. Exactly. And I, yeah, I've been saying for years that I'll, I want this done by winter, and it just hasn't happened. So maybe uh, today's the year, or this year's the year. I do have to finish. I think I have to make a binding for it yet. Although I feel like I may have made this binding at some point. Oh no, I didn't. So I do have to make a binding and I think I'm gonna do a black binding. So I think the black will be really kind of cool with this pattern on the back. And I think black looks just really neat with the jeans and you know, it'll go with these ties. So I'm just doing, did I tie this twice or just, just once? Just once. Um, I'm planning on doing just like the normal, um, the traditional binding that we do by doing like that two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches and folding it in half and then then sewing it on and then hand stitching the back on. Um, I'm, I'm planning on doing that with black. I think I have solid black fabric yet. Dang, I'm gonna have to look, look through my stash to make sure that I have binding fabric. I think I do though. Oh, Linda, I've been working on this for literally a decade plus. I can probably find, uh, when I first started, I took a photo of me cutting out the little yellow wool squares in the middle. I bet you I could find that somewhere and I wonder if it's dated, but I'm pretty positive we are in the um, over 10 years <laughs> at this point. I mean, I, I just, as I acquired jeans, I just kept cutting them and um, putting them in my little, my little uh, sewn up one and a half inch spool of um, yarn or of um, jeans. So I just, I've just been adding to it and adding to it. Oop, my scissors got buried somewhere. Oh, there it is. But yes, this is. I know exactly, Linda. So this is one of those horrible projects. Not horrible, but like one of one of those true UFOs, a true unfinished uh, project here. <laughs> uh, so feels good to have it out, and man, it's it's just got to get done. Maybe it might be my December uh, finish it Friday as well, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a little farther before then. That'd be nice. It's just so cumbersome. Oh, but man, it's gonna be an awesome um, winter quilt. It's gonna be so heavy. It's gonna be like one of those, have you heard of those quilts with like the, the pellets or the rocks in it? Um, oh, a, like a gravity quilt. It'll be just super heavy like a, like a gravity quilt. So hopefully it keeps me warm and helps me sleep. Oh yeah, binding will go fast. And I kind of love doing the binding, Pat. Um, it, it just feels like that last finishing step and you know it's the last step, except for giving it a, a good wash. So that's, that's I'm excited for the binding. I, I'm one of those people that like the binding, like doing the binding. I know not everyone likes that, but that's one of the steps that I do actually really like. So if I can get through these seven, seven squares and then the the border. I mean, the border will take almost as long as the entire center took, I'm guessing. So, <laughs> might be a little while yet. Ugh, and then to sew the binding is gonna take and cut the binding will take a while. But it'll eventually get done. I'll work at it every once in a while. Got to make this a priority unfinished project, I think. All right, let's let's trim all these. Then we got this this guy done too. Ugh, that's what I'm hoping, Patricia, that I won't be able to move when I'm under it. It'll just be so cozy. Yep, I, I totally agreed, Noeline and Marianne. I, I love doing um, the hand stitch binding. It's just relaxing, and it's the last step. It just feels right, feels good. 
Okay. Ah, uh, you know what, guys? I think we are going to stop there for tonight because I think it'll take a little while to do the next one. But we got four done tonight, which is four more than um, than I have had done in the past, and it feels really, really good to be working on this again. Ooh, let's get rid of a pin that we all the pins that we don't need. So I don't know. I'll let this this quilt hang out. Uh, here and maybe I will um, work on it a little bit more um, throughout uh, th through the weekend here. So all right, I'm gonna flip you around and I'll try to maybe hold it up a little bit. I won't be able to hold it up very well, but um, I can kind of show you it what it how big it looks like with a, a person in front of it. So I'm gonna uh, flip you guys around. All right, hello again. All right, so I'm gonna hold up the quilt just just this edge here so you can kind of see the size of it but yeah so here's the border I just did the rest of the strips for the border but here's ugh, like one of those one of those uh, squares there I think um, I think they ended up being like 18 inch squares something like that so jeans 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 oh awesome I feel great. I feel great that I got this out again. I feel great that we got four more of those squares done. Uh, it's gonna get done one of these days. <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice though having a project that always is a little unfinished and then you can keep working on them. But man, yeah, I don't know. We have to stop starting new projects so we can finish the UFOs. I know that is the uh, that is the world of the problem, isn't it, Lucy? <laughs> Just do a little each day for 15 minutes. You know what? I, I think that might be the way to do it, Nolene. It might be the time to just let this sit out and yeah, every morning just do one of those little squares, like do three ties or something, and then eventually it'll be done. It might actually, it might be at that stage that I gotta just get it into the routine because uh, it's gotta get done. Agreed. <laughs> so awesome, guys. I hope you got a little further on your unfinished project tonight. Uh, we'll be back. To normal on Monday uh, I think we're gonna start I'm gonna try and clean my sewing machine over the weekend and then Monday uh, pending ever the sewing machines fine on Monday we'll start free motion quilting our quilt as you go pieces which I'm so excited I haven't free motion quilt since the uh, um, the charming chevrons quilt so it'll be good to practice again and get working on that and man i don't know i don't know how we'll make our motifs yet so that'll be kind of that'll be a fun challenge i think uh and you know and we can change as we go uh that's the beauty of quilt as you go so i'm excited for that that will be monday and um then we'll probably do that until we get the new block on thursday so awesome thanks again for joining me have a fabulous uh, weekend you guys and I will see you Monday at 8 30 p.m. Central Time here on the Penguin and Fish page on Facebook. So see you later. Have a great weekend. Good night.